Hello, and welcome to Jumpin' Johnny Gaming. This Agatha Christie The ABC Murders video shows you how to complete the second chapter called Bucks Hill, and this is a continuation of the good playthrough. You start in your house, read the newspaper to the right of you for an achievement or trophy, and you can sit in the chair by the desk for another one. Head over to the top left corner and interact with the bookshelf, and pick up the book and turn it around. End over, Emshire. Population, 31,200 inhabitants. To the right of the front door is a mirror that you can interact with, then pick up the letter that's been posted through the door. Dear Mr. Poirot. Go and interact with the two letters at the main desk for a puzzle, and you have to interact with some of the writing to see if it's written by the same typewriter. Click on the capital L, the capital letter A, and the small faded letter W on each letter. Yes, this I is weird. The eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Of course! The W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Pick Andover ABC Guide, and the first victim was called Asher. Pick the letter announcing the Bexhill's crime. Exit the house, get in the taxi, and then enter the police station. To Scotland Yard, please. Investigate the medals directly to the right, and hover over the medals, Order of Merit, and the Shooting Trophy. Jab has invested a great deal in his career. Jab. 
chap is an investigator greatly respected by his peers. Head over to the large map and investigate the two red pins. Alice Asher was murdered in Andover, the ABC killer's first murder. London, I really like this city. One thing is certain, you never get bored here. Observe the detective and hover over the pile of files, the cup of tea and the telephone. Chap appears to already be overloaded with work. My news is not going to improve matters. During the choice of dialogue, pick the next victim's name. We'll start with B. I suspect that the name of the second victim will start with B. Investigate the buildings to the right and hover over where the water and sand meet, the huts and the houses at the back. Bexhill is a pretty little seaside resort with elegant architecture, although personally I prefer more modern buildings. Head down to the beach and talk to the detective, and then investigate the body to the right. Investigate the face, neck, the right hand, the rope on the floor, the book, which you've got to turn it around, the key on her left hand and her skirt. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. These marks have been left by a rope or breaded cloth. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. A braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Pick the options she did not struggle there was a braided silk belt, and the victim had marks on her neck. Pick the options ABC Guide open at the Brexel page, and Andover ABC Guide. Pick the option the press does not know that the ABC Guide was found in Andover. Head to the beach shacks, head to the fourth one from the left, 
Flip the number the right way and you'll see the code for the padlock. Then go and enter the numbers 715 and unlock it with the key you got from the body and slide the lock-in mechanism. A dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. Investigate inside and interact with the shoes, bag and the picture on the wall and move it until it counts as a clue. The purse is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motive for the murder. Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. Betty's first day at work. Head back up the stairs and enter the restaurant on the left hand side. In the building, interact with the mirror on the left hand side. I'll be with you in a minute, gentlemen. Observe the shopkeeper and hover over her hair, clothes and the till. Something tells me that she is the owner of the ginger cat. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. Investigate the counter now that the shopkeeper is gone. Interact with the book on the right. Go to the left page on Betty at 7.30pm and Millie at 5pm. Then interact with the tickets on the left and pick the bottom left and bottom right tickets. Where is Betty? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? Interesting. Betty was alone between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Who did she serve?
These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover, maybe the murderer? This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Most probably a family. Betty served a family and a man on his own. You will talk to the shopkeeper automatically. Pick the following options. Say that on the contrary, it's an advert for the town. Ask if the man in the photo is her gentleman's friend and sympathize about the difficulty. She was a hard-working and pleasant young woman. I didn't know her that well. She'd only been here for two summers. I know that she had a young man. He used to call for her sometimes. This photo was found. Is this him? Yes, that's him all right. But I haven't seen him for some time. I find young people today very hard to understand. You needn't tell me that. A few weeks ago, they argued just outside the cafe. Imagine what my customers must have thought. I hope for you that it was an isolated incident. It must be difficult to keep a respectable establishment if your staff show themselves to be so shameless. The young man only made a scene the once. Jealousy, no doubt. It must be said the young girl was very pretty. Thank you for your time, Mademoiselle Merion. You have been of great help. Exit the shop and interact with the side of the building. Hover over the top right of the building, the building on the left, and the sand by the deck chairs at the bottom of the screen. Could it be the same buildings as on the victim's photo? This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. Head down the road where all the cars are and enter the building where Hastings is standing. Inside, go to the mirror at the back wall and interact with it. Observe the piano and then hover over the violin, the sofa and the piano. The Barnard appeared to make music a priority in their budget. They're all Miss Modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. Observe the sister and hover over her eyes, picture frame and right hand. What is she feeling at the moment?
Betty's older sister is not just sad, she's angry. Talk to the sister and pick the following options. Ask if Betty went out. Insist on the truth. Duffin? My sister wasn't a child, sir. She used to go out. She enjoyed films, dancing. She was a very good girl who didn't hang around with men. That's what they always say, no? I am not interested in what people say. I am interested in the truth, Mademoiselle Barnard. If you only knew how much I would like to talk with someone who does not know that your sister is dead and who could provide me with a true portrait of her, beyond the formalities. The truth is that my sister was a silly little fool. I tried to reason with her, but she behaved like an idiot. In what way? She used to say that if she was going to marry Don, she might as well have some fun now. I understand. Please continue. Head upstairs, interact with the mirror, then observe the table with the microphone. Hover over the microphone, music stand and the metronome. It looks like Betty was also a music lover, the same as her family. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. Investigate the dresses on the bed and observe the small table by the bed and hover over all the three items on the table. Deciding what to wear. Maybe she had a date. It looks like Betty has a very busy life. Betty liked luxury and going out, and being as pretty as she was, she probably did not have any problem getting herself invited. Go to the left-hand side of the bed, investigate the table, and interact with the medicine and the box, and you will get a key. Medicine to prevent voice loss. Did Betty have problems with our voice? This small key should be useful to me. I've finished with this subject. Interact with the album cover stuck on the wall and the clock for a puzzle to solve. For an achievement a trophy, Grab the clock hand and go in one motion using the analog stick straight to 12. It will click in place if it doesn't work or you didn't do it in one fluid motion. Just exit the puzzle to restart. Something on this clock bothers me. There, that's better. This metal disc is stuck. This metal disc is stuck. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. At the front of the clock, on the bottom right stand, it's loose and you can screw it off. 
and the same thing on the top side and that will make a panel open. Use the analog stick to twist them off. Grab the key. This leg is not well attached. Good. It should be possible to open the wooden panel. Look, a key. This could be useful. Go to the top of the clock, slide off the panel, and there will be four switches on each corner. On the top left, set it to the right. The top right, set it to the left. And then the bottom left, set it to the middle. Use the key and turn the top left cog, then the bottom right cog, and then finally the middle cog. This will open up a slot at the front of the clock that again you can use the key. This will open up the other side and you can get the two letters. Something clicked on the front of the clock. This could be useful. Head back downstairs, interact with the record player for another puzzle. Use the key and slide the panel open. Interact with the record to take it. And the code on the record is the code for this puzzle. Interact with the paper with the music symbols. This is a clue for the next code. Let us see, what is this cupboard hiding? This looks like solfege. Go to the right hand side of the record player and unlock it using the key. Grab the handle, slide open the panel and enter as the code the music symbols. The first one is a line with a one dot and the next two is a line with two dots. This will unlock another combination on the same side. Enter the code that was on the record 78T.
I heard the sound of a mechanism being triggered. just have to put the record on the gramophone and start it. Go to the front of the record player and zoom in to the record player itself. Flick the switch to bring the needle up. Put the record in the player and then flick the switch back down. And finally, go to the side of the player and stick the crank in and turn it twice to play the record and complete the puzzle. Looks like something goes in here. If Don didn't insist, she... Well, it's too late for all that now. Observe the sister again and hover over her eyes, her ring finger on the left hand, and the picture frame. It looks like this woman is single, but she has feelings for someone. She is looking so intensely at this photo. But is it really a sister that she's studying in this manner? Interrogate the sister and pick the following options. Ask if Donald was in love with Betty. Accuse her of lying. Ask her if she fears Donald is going to be a suspect. He... Well? He's a bright man with a promising career ahead of him. He would have made Betty a good husband. He was always attentive and generous. Oh, a true gentleman. I hear a note of envy in your voice. You must have heard wrong. Donald appeared to be very much in love with your sister. Yes, he was mad about her. Mad, you say? Being madly in love can often be destructive, and Mr. Fraser was known for being jealous, I believe. No more than average. Men are always slightly possessive, especially when they are with a pretty woman. You are a poor liar, Mademoiselle Bernard. Excuse me, Mr. Poirot, but I do not see why you are interested in our humble little crime. It would appear that your sister's mother is the second in a series that we have to stop as quickly as possible. The first was in Andover, and the same as your sister, the murderer sent me a letter informing me that a crime would be committed in that town. Now can I count on your honesty? Yes, you have my confidence, Mr. Poirot. Don is a quiet and sensitive young man, slightly reserved too, and as is often the case with reserved people, when he flew into a temper, he completely lost control. He could be so violent. Betty was frightened. And when was this? The first time was about a year ago. But they rowed more recently. 
Donald found out that Betty had lied to him. He said she was going out with a girlfriend, but she went out for dinner with a married man. It was an awful scene. She told him that until they were married, she was free to go with whoever she pleased. Donald turned quite pale and started shaking and kept saying one day, one day. Well? He'd commit murder. So you were afraid that he would become our main suspect? I know that Fraser was jealous, but I wonder why you feel the need to protect him. Exactly. Had you not told me about the case, I would never have dared to tell you about this little matter. Don loved Betty with all his heart. I can't imagine for one instant that he would hurt her. Very good, Mademoiselle Barnard. Thank you for your help. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Jews, Betty has probably planned to meet that evening. Betty was seeing other men, as well as Donald and Betty lied to Donald, what she was planning to do the day before. Choose the victim had marks on her neck. Choose Megan kept looking at the picture of Donald and Betty and Megan really liked Donald Fraser. Choose Betty was seeing other men as well as Donald. Exit the house and return to the restaurant. Talk to Donald, then do an observation and hover over his eyes, his clothes and the whiskey bottle. This man looks suspicious. Fraser is in a terrible state, as if he hadn't slept all night, and he's drinking white horse. Leave me alone. Interrogate Donald and ask the following questions. Ask if he saw Betty yesterday afternoon. Tell him he's a suspect. Specify that her sister was in London. Accuse him of lying, just like Betty, and inform him that there is a killer to find. Did you visit Betty yesterday afternoon? No, I haven't seen Betty for two days. I was at the office yesterday afternoon. Can you prove that? Of course. But why this question? Betty died yesterday evening, didn't she? Betty was murdered during the night. But that does not prove that she did not meet a murderer earlier in the day. So am I a suspect? Everybody close to Betty is a suspect, Mr. Fraser. 
I would be a very poor detective if I did not examine all possible eventualities. Do you know what Betty's plans were yesterday evening? She said she was having dinner with her sister. Yet, Megan only returned to Bexhill this morning, Mr. Fraser. I didn't know. Right. May I ask you what you were doing yesterday evening? I spent the evening working. Your colleagues can confirm this? No. I often take work home with me. You are lying, Mr. Fraser. As was Betty when she hid the fact from you that she was seeing other men. Betty was a very decent young woman. How dare you sully her memory! I am not interested in memories of her, Mr. Fraser. Pick Betty used to go out a great deal, and Donald was a violent man. Pick Donald does not have an alibi. Pick the two murders were premeditated and were carried out by the same murderer. Leave the shop and you will enter the reconstruction. Enter the following options, advance, change, and advance. Fraser doesn't have an alibi and he's extreme. The killer and the victim are walking on the beach. Miss Betty has a bag, a belt around her waist, and carries her shoes in her hand. Both of them walk slowly to aunt number five. Both of them walk slowly to hut number six. Miss Betty enters the hut. She leaves without her belongings. Then she hides a coat. They keep walking. Then she removes a belt. Leave Buxall by the car that's parked in the street. Back at the house, the dialogue choice does not matter, and that completes chapter two. Right, back to London. There is nothing more for us to do here. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, where there are more story-based choice and consequences games with walkthroughs plus achievement and trophy guides, secrets and tips from the latest releases to retro games. Thanks for watching.